Hey, what's up guys? It's Will back once again for another Fight Card Prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC 243 from Marvel Stadium, which i just seen earlier on, which is pretty badass, uh, as Robert Whitaker faces off against Israel Adesanya in an absolutely unbelievable main event. Uh, apart from that, <laughs> the card's pretty weak, um, so I'm not going to spend all of the time there kind of talking about this card. Um, so if... If you can like, comment, subscribe, help grow the channel, I'd much appreciate that. I've had a lot of new people come in over the last couple of weeks, and I much, much appreciate that, even though my picks uh, have not been all that great. So um, stick with me with that. I, I put out a post in my community feed on YouTube there where I'm thinking I, I, whether, whether I'm going to step away from making prediction videos. Uh, and I'm still not sure. Um, I'm just I'm a little bit worried that I, I, I cannot put in the time that's kind of going to justify some of my picks. Life's getting in the way, my daughter's getting older, uh, work's becoming more of a, a thing, so it's kind of hard to really go in 100% in this as much as I'd like to, but um, yeah, I, I'm still kind of deciding what I'm going to do with that. But in saying that, I've already started watching fights for next week's card, so the, problem, the chances are I'm definitely going to be uh, probably around for a little bit. But yeah, just a, a couple of things on my mind and personal stuff as well. So it's kind of hard to, to kind of fully focus on things sometimes. Um, but again, just thank you for helping me grow my channel, liking the videos uh, and subscribing. I much, much appreciate that um, so much. The other thing I'm going to talk about is the poster giveaway. I've decided how I'm going to run it. I've got a list of everybody who wants to be in it. If you would like to be in it, it's going to start next week at UFC Tampa. Uh, I'm going to give you five picks. You pick the, the person who's going to win, the method how they're going to win, and what round or whatever uh, they're going to win. Um, but we're going to have a captain mode where you one of your five picks gets double the amount of points. So if you get the right amount of points, you get double that. If not, you don't get any, pretty much. So uh, keep an eye on that. It's going to start next week for the simple reason there's going to be more fights in that card. And I prefer it that way um, with us 13 fights instead of 11 here at UFC 243. And it gives an opportunity for other people that don't know about the, the giveaway to join as well. So if you'd like to join, just say that you'd like to join the giveaway for the post and I'll add you to the list. But we're probably going to be starting that next week. So keep an eye on that. Right, uh, I'm going to fly through this card because I don't want to... It's not the greatest card for, for kind of sticking around and talking for 20 to 30 minutes. I, I've seen some people speak over an hour. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing spending an hour of your time talking an hour about this card for? There's other things to be doing. So no, if you want to go more in depth through it, then by all means. But I'm not, I'm not kind of out for that for this card. So uh, Bantamweight Division with Khalid Taha against Bruno Silva. I've seen a lot of love for Bruno Silva and uh, I, for one, don't really see it. I like Khalid Taha. I think he's got very fast hands. Did not see that knockout coming of Boston Salmon as quick as it did. Um, but he's shown he's got very good power, very good speed. I think he, where Bruno Silva might have an advantage here is maybe with his grappling. I think he will be at a striking disadvantage against Khalid Taha. Um, but he might be at a grappling advantage. Um, he, I think he's the best friend of Henry Cejudo. And he comes out of fight ready and and so on. and. Um, trains with the Pitbull brothers and Eric Albaracinas is I think one of his head coaches. Now that's not a bad team to have around you because they're on they're streaking at the minute. So um, that's not a bad bad camp to be coming from right about now. And seeing that the the first thing when I put in Bruno Bulldog Silva, the first thing I saw was a, a knockout. He got sparked in seven seconds, a horrible knockout. Very very and that happened. That can happen to anybody. If someone comes out and throws a, a massive left high kick, he can hit you with it and you could go to sleep. But it wasn't the best first impressions I got. Looked into him. I actually saw he won via I think it was a spinning kind of wheel kick. That was pretty sweet. Actually, a really really nice knockout to see. Um, I think he fought in like the Dana White contender series. That it was a uh, tough Brazil. It was one of the, the two. I think in fact it was Dana White show. I think so. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of betting him because the, the odds are kind of high on him. It's like he's plus 200. For me, I, I would never really go there. I think Khalid Taha has got a speed advantage. I think he's got a power advantage. And I think if he, he catches the chin of Bruno Silva, he will knock him out. But if Bruno Silva can establish with his takedowns, then uh, that could be the, the fight that he needs to, to kind of go on and win. But I've got Khalid Taha have your decision. Nadia Kassem against Ji Young Kim. I've got Ji Young Kim here. For the life of me, I wanted to pick Nadia Kassem, but then you go back and watch her fights and you're like, no way can you pick her. Um, you, you can't do it. I think if you got dog money on Ji Young Kim, which some people did, that's a great bet, by the way. I, I was just never really on that as quick as I was with Maradov last week when he was plus 150. Um, 
She's got a win over Alex Chambers. She got dominated by Montana de la Rosa. Monta Montana de la Rosa. Pretty convincingly last time out. Um, green. Just still green. She, she was never ready for the UFC in the first place. And I think Jiyoung Kim, she's got an advantage with her with her striking. I think she can pop a job out there. I think she can fight um, a distance a bit more. She's got a, a reach advantage. I think she will double up on her strikes easy. Where Nadia Kassim is just wide open. You can take her down. You can beat her up in the feet. She's game. I'll give her that. But I don't, I don't think she's going to make the massive, massive strides in a game that's going to win her fights in the UFC. So I'm going to go Ji Young Kim there. Jamie Malarkey against Brad Riddell is up next. Your main fight of the, the prelims here. Uh, the UFC fight pass prelims, I should say. This is this could end up being a decent fight. I've known about Brad Riddell for a little bit um, through his kickboxing, his Muay Thai fights and so on. He's fought a lot of guys out there. If you go onto YouTube, you'll see who he's, who he's been against. Comes from that uh, City Kickboxing Academy out of uh, Auckland, New Zealand, which is really on the rise with, obviously, with Izzy, with Volkanovski, I think Shane Young's from there, Dan Hooker, um, Kai Car of France. So it's one of these new group. It's kind of like, it reminds me of Ireland when SBG came through, all the fighters came through at the same time. It's kind of the same thing here with City Kickboxing. Um, Jamie Malarkey, I th when, I, when I first said this match, I thought this is a bit of a setup for Brad Riddell. When I went, watched Jamie Malarkey, I thought the guy's game. I think he can. I don't think he can necessarily strike for a long time with Brad Riddell. I think he, what he has to do is he do enough in the feet to to keep it really interesting, and then try and shoot those takedowns because that's where he has the advantage, in my opinion. Heavy top game, big big ground and pound, loves the elbows, um, but he basically has to watch what he's doing when he's in a striking kind of stratosphere of Brad kind of Riddell because I think he is. Like I say, his game, I think he can take a shot, but I don't think he can stand up there the whole entire fight and not expect to get hit with some big shots. So mix it up, get in the clinch, try and get takedowns. That, that's where I think he's got um, a better chance of winning this fight. I'm going to take a shot on Jimmy Malarkey to come through here and win in his UFC debut. Obviously two new guys. Um, but yeah, I'll take Malarkey. I've kind of changed my tune on that guy. and uh, Seen that he's got a lot of toughness there. He's been putting some bad positions, came through it as well. So I'll take Malarkey via decision. Uh, Megan Anderson against Zara Fernandez Santos up next. I mean, pff, you cannot trust Megan Anderson anymore. But the thing is with De Santos is that she's a striker. She has big power herself. Um, Megan Anderson, we've seen that if you take this girl to the ground, she's got nothing. I don't see that being any different here. I don't think De Santos is going to take it there. I think she's going to initiate a stand-up battle. I think Megan's a little bit. Uh, I think she's got a little bit of a reach on her. Um, I think she's got a wee bit more tools with her kicks. But Santos, would it surprise me if she caught her with a shot and put her down? No. I've seen that Megan Anderson's minus 500. No go. Big time. I feel like it's a set-up fight in saying that. But I said that last week in Denmark and I was made to look a fool with, with that statement. Um, but I'm going to pick Megan Anderson in that one. There. I'm not going to spend too much t time talking about it. She could get a TKO uh, or she could get a decision. But I think she wins the fight regardless. Carlin Pot against Maki Patolo. I'm going Mackie Patolo here. I think that Callum Porter was just he's been, he's been brought into the UFC far too late. Um, I I want to say he fought at 155 against Jalen Turner last time. I could be wrong in that aspect uh, in that kind of statement there, but got starched in 53 seconds. Patolo, his nickname is Coconut Bombs. The guy throws absolute hammers. Uh, the only kind of way I can see Porter maybe winning this fight if he gets it to the ground, catches him in a submission or so on. Uh, I don't see it. Patolo, I think, is going to knock him out in the first round, so I've got Patolo there. Uh, Jake Matthews against Rostem Ackman's up next. I've got Jake Matthews. I think this is going to be a, a back and forth kind of fight, but I have Jake Matthews. Again, he's a hard fighter to trust for the simple reason he's so up and down. You don't know what Jake Matthews you're going to get. He had that run where he beat Li Jing Liang, Anzai, but then he came out and he, he kind of got, I don't want to say he got dominated against Jake Matthews. Um, Rocco Martin, but he he was in trouble in that fight for pretty, pretty much he was outstruck he was out he couldn't really grapple too much with with Rocco and eventually got caught in that submission in the third round there and that kind of put the stamp on the fight there for Rocco Martin. Um, Ackerman durable came in short notice in his UFC debut. I just think that Jake Matthews has got a little bit a little bit um, too much for Ackerman right now. I think Ackerman like I say I think he's been rushed into the UFC in my opinion, but. Um, I still think I can see a, I can see a ceiling for Jake Matthews. I think that he's still young enough where he can start to make those improvements. 
I say this every video, I think you'd, I'd hope he'd go to a better camp, I think that would really help him out. I've got him winning this fight though, I think he could, he could stop Ackman, if not he could win a fairly comprehensive decision. I've got him by decision though. Uh, this fight I think has got moved to the pay-per-view card after Holly Holm and Kel Pennington's got bumped off after Holm got an injury, but it's uh, Justin Taffer against Jorgen De Castro. Uh, I've got a bit of a funny story, I've spent kind of majority of my day watching kickboxing fights of who I thought was Justin Taffer and it was actually his brother Junior Taffer um, which is a little bit silly I got I was doing MMA huddle earlier on and John says that's his brother I'm like no way have I spent my afternoon watching kickboxing fights uh, and it's not even the right guy so it's not the right guy but I have seen the fights of his MMA fights of Justin Taffer um, big big body kick very flat footed has his hands low which is a little bit concerned but he is a young fighter uh, it reminds me of Tai Tuivasa a little bit. Like I say, big body kicks, massive uppercuts, big, big power. Um, yeah, that, that that's kind of the only thing that comes out. He's only like 3-0, I want to say, in his UFC, uh, in his UFC career, his MMA career. So, like I say, he's still really, really green in the sport, but um, they're, they're calling him the next Mark Hunt and so on. I'm just like, dude, don't do that uh, to a kid that age. Seems like every guy that comes out of there, they're, they're christening him the next Mark Hunt and so on. But, um, yeah, like I said, he kind of reminds me of Tai Tuivasa in that aspect. He, big, big power. Love his body kick. And if you go and watch, I think it's the John Hadley fight. That's a vicious knockout, by the way. Uppercut in close. Knocks him down. The head bounces off the canvas a couple of times. Nasty, nasty knockout. Jorgen De Castro. Uh, very aggressive. Kicks really hard. Um, like I said, he kind of spams the kicks quite a bit. A little bit surprised, um, not surprised, when you see the difference from uh, his amateur career to his professional career, you can see that he's made the changes. I've listened to a couple of interviews tonight regarding the people that he's got around him that have changed him into being the fighter that he is today um, with uh, just putting things together more as a professional, being more professional pretty much instead of not like sitting back and being lazy in your amateur fights and that showed because he lost a lot. But... Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a coin flip fight. I'm going to go with the hometown guy in Justin Taffer. I think that uh, initially it could be uh, De Castro could come out, maybe hit him up with a couple of things and, uh, and light him up a little bit. But I think Taffer's going to stick around and catch him with a big shot and knock him out. So, But I think it could, could get very, very sloppy. So I'm going to go uh, Taffer for the win there. Luke Jumo against Diego Lima. I mean, wow. I still don't trust Diego Lima's chin. I know he's on a two-fight win streak when he, he starts Charlie Pre, beat Court McGee, which is a good win, because um, he's very durable. Maybe the durability's kind of gone a little bit, but um, still a decent one to have in your record there. Luke Jumo uh, coming off that win, I want to say, against Daichi Abe. A way back, Christ, it's been a while since this guy's fought as well. He lost to Anzai. Um, I see this being a very kind of... I don't think it's going to be a great fight, honestly. I'm still worried about... Diego Lima's chin in the UFC, I really am, I, I don't, I still think if he gets hit with anything half decent, he will fold, I think if he was to take it to the ground, Diego Lima, I think he's got an advantage here, um, I'm going to go Luke Jumo though, with no confidence whatsoever, but being at home, hopefully that kind of pulls him through, it's a rough fight to, to pick up. I'm not very confident in that, but I'm going to go Luke Jumo for the win there. Just a thank you to all the guys in, in there. I'm trying to get this chat to work, but for some reason my phone doesn't let me do it. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for just sticking around and thank you for the thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Um, Tied to Avasa against Sergei Spivak. Sergei Spivak is absolutely atrocious. I, had some, I couldn't believe, like, people were, some people were, were coming at me for picking against them, against. Walt Harris and I could not believe it for the life of me that um, people were attacking me for picking against them. Set up fight for Tai Tuivasa, lost to Blagoj Ivanov, lost to Junior Dos Santos in a main event. This fight set up for him. He's gonna. I I, I don't see many aspects of how this Sergey Spivak can can win here. Uh, load up in Tai Tuivasa if you're doing parlays. Uh, that's what I'm probably going to do. I've got already got him in one that uh, I can't remember who else he's with, but I've got him in there, I think I've got minus 275, he's still minus 275 in the UK, which is weird, considering America he's different, he's going to win, I'm going to go first round knockout for Tai Tuivasa, too good, uh, too powerful, 
too varied for, for Spivak, who's probably going to come in and win a clinch up, but it's going to get a shot and go down here in the first. Co-main event, I, uh, Al Ayakinta against Dan Hooker. Good, good fight. I like the co-main event. I think this is a really good co-main event. Um, you've got the, the, the ever kind of dangerous style of Dan Hooker, who's... I'll be honest, I'll put my hand back. He's got better than I ever thought he would, and he's got wins over people that I didn't think he would ever beat. So, uh, much respect to that guy. Very, very dangerous with, with elbows, with stepping knees. Uh, absolutely blew through James Vick last time out with, with a vicious first round knockout. But in saying that, we know what to do with James Vick. If you can land on that chin, you can put him down fairly, fairly easily. Um, took that, obviously, bludgeoning against Edson Barboza. But before that, great wins like great wins against Mark Diacese, great win against Gilbert Burns, who that win looks even better now considering what Gilbert Burns is doing at 170. He's even calling out to go to 185 for a fight. I think it was against Brendan Allen in Boston a few weeks' time. I know that Kevin Holland's got that fight, but uh, yeah, a really, really dangerous fighter with, with his striking. Very, very crisp with his striking and very dangerous with his chokes as well. If you get in too close, you try and take this guy down. He's got big leverage with his long arms that you have to be really super careful um, and I'm seeing a lot of people like um, like he's, people are really confident in Dan Hooker this week and I'm I like he's bet up to minus 165 I, don't, I think that line's a little bit wide in my opinion maybe people are just everybody sees something different so um, I I think Ali Quinta's very very live here I think he's coming off a really Obviously, he got hurt really badly against Donald Cowboy Cerrone, but he's a, a totally different fighter to what Dan Hooker is with the... With, well, no, there's similarities with him. I think the stepping knees, uh, very, very quick off the gun. But, um, yeah, he, he's fought the far higher caliber opposition. Uh, he wins this fight. If Dan Hooker wins this fight, I mean, he moves himself into the top ten top maybe top seven of that UFC lightweight division I never ever thought I would have seen that if I'm being honest with you um I think he fought a really heart uh, hard heartfelt fight against kind of Khabib Namagomedov gave his all was just outclassed from the get going that one came back against Kevin Lee I did not see that coming I thought Kevin Lee was going to beat him but then I did think that Cerrone was going to go through him pretty quick um but the guy's got a lot of heart he's very very durable and um yeah, it, it, this this one's a tough one for me to pick because I think that Dan Hooker, when he turns up, he's very deep. Like you say, he's got so many tools that he can really, really hurt you with. But can Ali, Ali can to get him down? I think he can. I think he can use his wrestling here. I think he has to get in close, get a hold of Dan Hooker somehow and, and take him down, but be very, very vigilant with what, um, with what Hooker's throwing because he, he's very sneaky with a lot of his strikes and he's very, very good, very technical as well. Um, and props to the guy because I never, I never thought he would get this high up in his UFC career, and he's, he's done so very, very well. So props to Dan Hooker. But I'm gonna go with Ali Quinta to win via decision in that one there. And the the main event of the night. I mean, fuck, what a great fight this is. Robert Whitaker makes his return, defends his UFC middleweight championship against the style bender, the last style bender, and the UFC um, interim middleweight champion. Israel, Adesanya, Australia against New Zealand. Big, big scene. I mean, this is massive. I kind of feel for the Aussie fans. So I said this on Twitter the other day there that I feel for those guys because they've got themselves like a fight that would headline anywhere and be huge anywhere. They've got it in Australia. They've got it in Marvel Stadium. Humongous stadium, by the way. And they've kind of feeded a card round about it that's not overly great, but... When you've got this fight, I'd, I'd pay probably just to watch this fight because when you look into it, like even looking back on these two guys, you've got, you watch Whitaker, his two wars with Romero, his fight with um, Jacare Souza, the Brunson fights on both guys, Tavares fights on both guys. I mean, there's some really epic knockouts, there's some really good fights. And uh, Israel Adesanya, I cannot believe like how quick this guy has like really pushed himself into the, the upper echelons of the division. Um and he's got himself here a fight which a lot, a lot of people are very, very high on Israel Adesanya and think that he's gonna absolutely I've seen some people say he's gonna wipe the floor with Whitaker, he's he's gonna be 
uh, too much for Whitaker. I think that's a call in itself because I think Robert Whitaker is one of the the most. I still think he's one of the most underrated champions in the UFC. With his um, just with his heart and his durability, his toughness. I, I mean, his fights with Romero. A lot of people give the second fight to Romero. I still think that Whitaker did enough to win that fight, but he showed a lot of heart in that one. But coming through, getting caught really, really in the middle part of that fight with the uh, the striking of Romero. Romero kind of came out very slow in the first two rounds, so he obviously had a game plan of keeping himself very, very um, ready to go in those last three rounds, and he did that. He came through, he hurt Rob a few times, but Rob showed the heart of a champion and came through and... Um, pulled through then he obviously was supposed to have the Gastelum fight and then that was that was pretty tragic what happened there with him getting out like I think a, a, a hernia on his body where he had to to get emergency surgery and uh, as he stepped up to to main event the show against um, Anderson Silva but then switching over to Adesanya you watch him in that fight with Gastelum there's something about the kid like when he needed to turn up and he got hurt in that fight. There's no need to make no bones about it. Uh, Gastelum hurt him in that fight. Um, but in that fifth round, the look in his eye to, to get in there uh, and just beat this guy, like he wanted it so, so much. And I mean, I love both guys. Um, I've seen some people come out and say that Robert Whitaker and Kevin, Kelvin Gastelum are the same type of fighter. I, I kind of disagree with that. I think that Robert Whitaker's a cut above Kelvin Gastelum, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Um, I've also seen people come out and say that Robert Whitaker should use a, a takedown game, like a takedown-based kind of game plan for this fight. And I'm like, when has Robert Whitaker ever did that? Like, come in and just go for takedowns? Um, when has Robert Whitaker faced someone with a style like Israel Adesanya? You're maybe going back to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who's not similar, but he's a little bit of a, a different type type of style than, than than what what he faces more more often. Like Izzy, Izzy to me is when you watch him, his distance control is unbelievable, and once he figures you out, you need to be very very careful because once he catches you and he establishes when you're going to come in, when he can counter you. Then you're in trouble. He did it with the Brunson when you watch him. He was, he could read Brunson so easily coming in, with knees and everything that he really started to to like pick him apart, uh, and made Brunson look silly in that fight. If I'm being honest with you, um, like I said, what I loved about the last fight with Gastelum showed mad heart, uh, really stuck in there and and like got hurt in one of the rounds. And I, this is the difference I think. I think if Robert Whitaker gets that opportunity with more time than what Gastelum had. I think Robert Whitaker's more cerebral than uh, Kelvin Gastelum. I really do. I think he's more uh, aggressive. I think he. I think he's a wee bit faster. I think Whitaker punches harder, in my opinion. Uh, what I love, I'm kind of talking about, is a range fight, in my opinion. So if Izzy can really establish his range, he's got a massive reach advantage in this one, by the way. One of the things that I like about that is he, he can pick different shots, he can switch stances, and once he gets that confidence there, he can really catch you on the counter-attack, he can lead the dance with his attacks. The thing I like about Robert Whitaker is how quick he can get in and um, get in like the phone booth, as they say, as they say and like really throw down, really, really, he can throw down, pretty much, and that's where I think he might have an advantage. Now, I think he, he could use some grappling. I think I'd be smart to maybe try and use some grappling here. Um, I was just speaking to MMA Huddle. I think he's one of the best anti-grapplers in the sport. He's really good at not getting taken down. But in saying that, UL got him down, Jackery got him down, but they were never prolonged periods in the ground where he was in trouble, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, Izzy's not going to come out here and go for takedowns, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think, but... Yeah, it's a fight out of range, and I think Izzy is going to have. He's going to have times in this fight where I think he's not going to be dominant, but I think he's going to just be a little bit ahead. But I think these rounds are going to be close. I think Robert, Robert Whitaker to me is, like I say, he's one of the most underrated guys. I think he can work people out. I'm a little bit worried about like the the fights that he's had. I'll be honest with you. I think that he's maybe his durability's gone. He's had a lot of injuries, um, and. 
people being on Israel, I, I don't mind that at all. I think it's a tough fight to pick personally. My gut feeling was Robert Whittaker. I've seen people come out and say Robert Whittaker's going to absolutely own Israel or Adesanya. He's going to show him that he should never really be at this level. And I think that you guys are stupid for saying that, if you, in my opinion. Because Izzy's come in here and he's, he's laid down the mark of who he is and how he's got to the top. He spoke well, picked the right matchups, been in the right spots. Um, but... My gut feeling was Robert Whitaker. I'm going to stick with Robert Whitaker. He's now an underdog here in the UK. That's going to be hard to pass up, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Robert Whitaker via a very, very close five-round decision. I think that's where I've got him winning here. But I can also see Israel Adesanya maybe catching him or maybe establishing that range uh, and picking him apart. Robert Whitaker, but I just think Robert Whitaker's got a lot more about him that than, than people kind of give him credit for. What I've seen, um, in my opinion, so I'm going to go Rob Whitaker via a very close decision in that one there. So that's my picks for UFC 243. It went a little bit longer than I initially did. Um, and I thought I was going to. Uh, I'm going to put the timestamps up there. Like I said, uh, thank you for the likes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the kind words regarding the the post up out on YouTube the other day there. Um, I'm going to be back for Tampa next week. Uh, and that, that's when the competition for the posters is going to be. I'm going to write, it's going to be five. You have to pick five fights of the 13. And you're going to get points for every guy that you pick right, the method and the round. And then you can pick a captain to get double points on. So, um, And then we're going to weed them out through there. Maybe the top 10 get through, then the top five. And then maybe by UFC 244, we can start handing out posters and so on and so on. So until... UFC Tampa Bay next week, which I think is a really good card, actually. I really like it. I'm into Cub Swanson, Cron Gracie at the minute. But um, until next week, thanks for sticking with me. All the best. And I will catch you for UFC Tampa and Jacek versus Watson next week. All the best. And thanks for the support, guys.